Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have a hand that I almost certainly messed up at some point. So it starts off with 10 for offsuit. That's usually not what you want to have, but sometimes it's what you deserve. And here it folds to me in the small blind, playing 75, 150 with a 25 ante. So that ante is very relevant. And the small blind is a tight, aggressive kid who I think is going to play straightforwardly enough. So in this scenario, I think I should either limp or fold. And if I am limping, I'm likely using a limp close to 100% range or maybe like 90% range. And then if I get raised, I'll limp re-raise some of my garbage, but I will limp fold stuff that's particularly terrible like this. And that may seem a little bit um, optimistic to say I want to limp and see a flop with 10-4 offsuit. But notice I have to put in 75 chips into a pot that's going to be the opponent's 150, my 150, plus the antes, depending on how many players are at the table. Maybe it's 200 chips or so on average. So that's going to be a 150, 150, and 200. That is 500 chips, right? So I have to put in 75 to win 500, which is fantastic pot odds. Am I going to realize like 20% equity with this hand, even out of position? I think I probably will, especially if my opponent's not going to be overly aggressive. So I don't mind limping. You could also certainly justify raising, but I think in today's game especially against reasonably competent players, most people know that when small blind raises, unless they make it gigantic, the big blind should call a large portion of the time just because they're in position getting great pot odds. So I would usually fold this against an aggressive player, but against a more passive player, I'm fine limping. Big blind does check, which is great. Flop comes queen, nine, two. Two hearts, obviously I have nothing. That's what you get when you play 10-4 offsuit. And now I have to decide if I want to bet or check. And in general, when I limp, I typically do make a continuation bet. I bet 275 into what looks like a 525 pot, which is probably what it is. And I'm okay with this. I think I would actually prefer a slightly smaller bet. That's going to allow me to make my later bluffs cheaper. And also, if my opponent just has nothing on this board, like imagine he has king four offsuit. He's just going to fold to any reasonable bet, like 200, right? And if he does have a pair or any sort of gut shot, he's not going to fold to any bets. So I would actually prefer to see myself make a slightly smaller bet. And it may seem a little bit nitpicky to say, I think 200 is way better than 275, but I really think it is. And that is something that if I was um, coaching someone on this hand, I would tell them you probably need to bet smaller. Alternatively, I could bet bigger, like 500 or maybe even 800. And if that will get my opponent to fold everything besides maybe a nine or better, or a good draw, then that's actually going to pick up the pot a pretty large chunk of the time. And even if I bet like a thousand here, if I pick up the pot two thirds of the time, then that's going to be profitable for me. So I think that that could also be a reasonable option, especially because our opponent has shown no aggression pre-flop. Not that, that necessarily means anything, but it's pretty hard for him to have random two pairs and whatnot. So I think I, if I did bet big here, I would probably pick it up a decent chunk of the time. So 275 may actually be one of the worst bet sizes. The opponent calls. I turn a four. So now I can either check or bet. Um, if I am betting, it is mainly for value, right? And protection. I'm not necessarily trying to get tons of money in the pot, but at the same time, I don't really want to check and then face aggression from the opponent because if I check and he bets and I call, um, if he bets again on the river, I probably need to fold and that doesn't seem great. Also betting here, especially if I think the opponent will be somewhat straightforward, will force him to fold out a lot of his marginal stuff that has equity. Like say he is sitting here with king seven. He's just going to fold, right? And that's clearly good. So I'm okay with this. I think in general, I would prefer to check because betting, again, when you bet, he's always calling with a queen or a nine, right? I think, if, again, if I bet, I would prefer a slightly smaller bet, like 300, because at least then, if he does fold anything, it's probably slightly wrong. And if he raises and I decide to stick around, which may or may not be right, it'll be a little bit cheaper. So I do bet 575. Now he makes it 1,200. 700 on top. Oh, man. I'm a sucker for pot odds, I'll tell you that much. 700 to win what's going to be a 3,500 pot. Do I have 20% equity in this hand? 700 divided by 3,500 is about 20%. And I don't know, probably. <laughs> it's hard to not have 20% equity. Um, that said, I did just kind of mention that I thought this player was going to be tight and aggressive and somewhat straightforward. 
but maybe not. Maybe when I was playing this game, I got a read that the opponent was perhaps messing around. Maybe I thought he would raise in this manner with a lot of draws. I don't know. I think I should probably fold here, but I could certainly see the logic in sticking around purely based on the pot odds. So I do stick around this time, and this hand, this whole hand feels really gross. River's a jack of hearts, which is pretty interesting. Notice now, in this scenario, what are the worst hands in my range? Just take a second and try to think about it. I bet the flop and bet the turn and then called a raise. Well, I either have a great draw, maybe like a flush draw, or a hand like jack 10, or maybe a hand like king 10, maybe a hand like 10-8. Um, also, I could have two pairs. I could have top pairs. I could probably have a nine. A lot of those nines are going to be jack nine or queen jack. And a lot of those hands would at least want to consider leading. Now, I'm not going to say you should necessarily lead with jack nine, but you should certainly consider leading with your flushes. So knowing that there are actually hands in my range that I would like to play in this aggressive or in this manner, what bluffs would I like to add into my range, assuming I think the opponent is not just a huge calling station? And thinking about my whole range, that's going to be stuff like Jack 10, but Jack 10 is actually way better. And then what else? I mean, there's not a whole lot, right? I could have a two or a four that I'd like to turn into a bluff. Maybe I could have ace three or ace five. I guess those are reasonable hands to turn into a bluff. But really, the best hands to turn into bluffs here are hands containing a heart or a 10, because those block my opponent from having a straight or a flush. And I certainly wish I had the 10 of hearts here. I don't. I have the 10 of diamonds. But I think it's probably fine enough to lead. Notice that I almost certainly do not have the best hand here, which is worth mentioning. A lot of people think, oh, I'm not turning a made hand into a bluff. But if it goes check, check, I pretty much lose every time. And if I check and my opponent bets, I need to fold, or at least not call based on my bottom pair value. So I liked it to lead, and again, this may feel a little bit like clicking buttons, but I, I think it does make sense to lead with this hand. It may even make sense to lead with a hand like 10-9 or 9-8 if I'm in here with those hands, um, especially if I have a heart with those. So pretty cool spot where I, I need to find some bluffs, and if you think about my whole range, it's kind of hard to find bluffs. So if there are any that exist, you should probably be using them, assuming you want to have a leading range. Now, you may not want to have a leading range because you may think the opponent's turn raising range contains a lot of draws and if that's the case then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to lead whenever a lot of the draws come in right because you're gonna get called by the good made hands and also the draws that came in so anyway i decided to lead I'm not sure how i feel about this hopefully he calls me i deserve to lose this one <laughs> but he folds and um somehow he went a nice pop with a 10-4 offsuit that's a lot of fun hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did let the people over at poker news know you can follow me on Twitter at Jonathan Little. Feel free to give me comments, suggestions, tips. Tell me not to click buttons so much. And be sure to check back next week for another fun poker hand.